Good afternoon guys, today what we're going to be doing is looking at when you get unexpected seams or shadows in your renders. So here's a situation, you see this one here, see, down here, and uh, sometimes you get other types as well. Now I'm not going to be able to demonstrate every single one of the different situations where you get shadows and creases and seams uh, because I actually can't reproduce them at the moment. Uh, they come up kind of randomly with different models and I've been through all of my models and I couldn't reproduce them but I know that they occur so I'll, I'll be talking about them even if I can't produce them at the moment because I know the solutions to them so this is the first common one that you're going to be seeing if you're using Superfly and uh, what this is caused by is by the skinning method so what I have here is a figure uh, with a with a texture a uh, subsurface texture and it looks fine it didn't require any conversion with uh, with easy skin or anything like that it renders straight out of the box except for the eyes but when you render it you get these weird creases here these these kind of lines and you can tell that it's a skinning problem and not a a texture problem because the the creases don't actually follow the lines where the texture joins. So what I mean here is that the head texture doesn't doesn't have a seam in the texture at this point. The head texture has a seam around about here. You'll you'll see here. This is where the neck the the neck geometry is for the sake of bending, as I just demonstrated there. See, this is this is the neck region when I bend. So, so they occur at the geometry seams, seams, not at the texture uh, seams. Here's a simple solution for that. So, here's what here's what we have. All you need to do is go up to Figure, Skinning Method, and you'll see it's Poser Traditional. Now, so far as I'm aware, this only occurs with Superfly rendering, not with Firefly. And then you just change that to Unimesh. And now with no other change, you go from this to this, and there they're out the way. Now, there are some other situations where you can get uh, creases and shadows and all kinds of stuff showing up. Let me just do a main camera. So this is a micro figure that was Victoria, and you'll often get them where you have extreme stream uh, figure bends um, one situation might be if you have kinematics turned on we'll talk about that sometime but kinematics is where when it's turned on and uh, you can turn that on by right clicking and selecting use inverse kinematics see I've got the right arm turned on here what that enables you to do is to grab that part of the figure and move it around and then the rest of the figure will follow it automatically now the left hand here is not turned on and look if I grab that all it just does is bends and the other joints don't logically follow on in the proper way so often when you have kinematics and then you pose other parts what you'll do is you'll get extreme bends at the joints particularly at the shoulder joints and at the wrist and they all cast shadow so the first thing to do there would be to switch kinematics off and, and let's see if I can uh, produce one of these weird bends now let me see okay so that shoulders kind of going a bit weird um so what you can often get is black shadows kind of wrinkles here and what you find is if you look at the shoulder joint what you'll find is that these will be not just minus 45 18 or whatever but you, you'll find particularly in the twist area that there'll be three four five hundred so they've twisted more uh, more than a full turn around and so they may look kind of okay or they may not but in actual fact, they've, they've kind of spiraled round more than a full turn on themselves. So what you need to do there is turn kinematics off. I'm using here a kinematics uh, script. So you turn kinematics off and then you return the joint. So supposing this joint here, let's put uh, another. So it's at 43. So let's make that plus 360. So 400 and 403. 403 so see that's kind of in the the arm below is in the same place but the shoulders gone really screwed up now this is an, a really great exaggeration but on the wrist it often doesn't show up that distorted so all I do here is where it's 403 I just go go there and just take away uh, 360 
and then the shoulder would be fine okay so so that's one situation also you can just have situations uh you're probably familiar with the idea of uh limits so if i click on this joint here the uh the thigh joint and then uh go to um sorry what am i doing that for um go to say the twist and click on this in settings you'll see here there's a force limits but often force uh, uh the force limits is turned off as it is here so you can go beyond the natural movement that that joint would be possible uh, of, of making so if i go side to side 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 and then you'll start to get some really weird lighting effects here such as shadow so again just be careful that you're not uh you're not moving the joints so far that it becomes unnatural okay now there is another situation here let me just bend this joint up here where you can get some shadows caused by the relatively low geometry and in that particular case and we've talked about this already but if you change the skinning method to unimesh and then increase the subdivision once or twice that will create a smoothing effect let me just show you by showing you this in hidden line mode so this is the mesh that is used for the um for the for the texture and the geometry but if i increase this by one you'll see that the resolution of that mesh now increases and sometimes that can create a nice smoothing effect that gets rid of weird shadow artifacts okay now there is uh, i said that i wouldn't be able to demonstrate okay let me just turn that back down i said that I wouldn't be able to demonstrate all of the artifacts and now we're on to one that i know i can't demonstrate because i'm using the wrong version of poser but there was an earlier version of poser and i'm not sure which version it was but i'm gonna guess around about poser 8 poser 9 and i don't know if it was a bug in poser i think it was too aggressively filtering but let me show you and this bug only occurred with firefly which was the only renderer available at the time well um so so you do a you do a render and there would be similar to the other ones not quite the same as the uh superfly the superfly ones that i showed you here not quite like that uh because they occurred at the junctions of textures not at the junctions of joints but you'd get that same effect and what the problem was in here let's have a look at her um her face here's a skin face and you'll notice there's a setting here filtering quality and i don't know why but there was there was a problem what this does is where the edges of textures join it uses an algorithm to make sure that the textures kind of butt up to each other it, it, it's kind of I guess you'd say a slight fuzziness so that you don't get a sharp edge where the textures are, are, are butting up to each other and for some reason poser was getting a bit aggressive with this filter and one way to to fix it was to change the status of this filter so if you are using an earlier version of poser and you're getting see, um, seams along say the points where the arm seams wrap around or anywhere on the figure you could try changing this to none or if it's already none you could try to, uh, changing up to quality and uh, just see if that helps okay now there's another situation and um, unfortunately there's not a lot you can do about this one but I'll show you it anyway I'll show you the idea the face texture as I mentioned earlier is composed of a face a neck and a torso but the face texture is a much higher resolution than the rest of the body you, you recall when you see a body texture say it's 4k uh, a 4k texture would represent the whole body and then you'd have a similar 4k texture just for the face and the reason is because you want the detail where the camera's most often going to be up close so if you're you know you're doing a lot of face close-ups here where you really want to see some expressions on a face you want a nice high resolution texture and so what happens with some let's say um imperfectly created textures you'll have a really nice high resolution face texture and then you'll get a line down the middle of the head here 
where the texture joins on to the lower resolution body texture and this seam here is not being matched up properly and uh, you'll most commonly see it on male textures it's very uncommon to have bald female textures obviously this is bald but then you're expecting to put a hair on it but with males there's lots of times when you'll have a very short or even a bald head and then that seam here will show and unfortunately there's nothing you can do about that because that's just how the textures were built that's just poor texturing um and then there's one more uh it, it's kind of um it, it's just a silly one really but i've, I've made this mistake uh before supposing you have a figure here and it's in a set supposing in the foreground let me just zoom right out here supposing in the foreground i've got a, a building surrounding it in this area i'm hoping you can see i'm trying a new cursor that supposedly is going to be visible but i'm um, supposing you've got a, a building say um, a warehouse and there's a window up here somewhere the light is coming through in this direction and maybe you've got a window frame and then that window frame will cast a shadow on the figure and when that happens if you forgot about the shadow you can see that as an error when in fact it's not an error it's a shadow being cast by your set so it's it's a very small thing but it, it can be annoying to track if you forgot about it or uh, there's other things you can get let me see if i can find one here um let me find lighting there are some lights that actually have uh that cast shadows themselves let me see if i can find i can't remember at uh, which um let me have a look at po oh no that's i've just changed the whole lighting let's have a look pose at eight lights here we go so we've got studio blinds here and studio butterfly see oh and uh, a broad light each of these has a uh, uh, i believe they call it a gobo and the gobo is like a, a screen that goes over the light let's see if this works with them so in theory this should cast a shadow now over the front of the figure when we render it i'm not sure if it's going to do it in um in superfly i d don't think the lights quite work the same but if not we can just do a quick render in firefly okay i've had a lot of um a lot of other windows open and unfortunately it's um slowed my peak my rendering down uh, what i need to do is shut all of my all of my um my other windows okay so no it's not done it let's see if i can get that to work in firefly for some reason the um the gobos light gobos don't work in um in superfly i believe it's to do with the resolution uh i i, I did solve it at one stage but i am um, I can't remember what it is offhand because I don't I don't use lights I use geometry so if I wanted to cast a light across here I'd put something in between the light and her face so that it would cast a sh uh, sorry if I wanted to cast a shadow across here I'd put something between the light and her face um, obviously that can be a problem if the light's very close because then it can be in camera so it, that's where a gobo could uh, come into it so if I change my render setting to firefly it's possible now let's see yeah uh, casting shadows okay it's possible that that's going to look that that's going to work better okay there you go you can see the shadows already showing through there so this shadow here across the face is cast by the light obviously all shadows are cast by the light but generally shadows are cast by by objects in the way of the light but this is cast by a mask on the light and let me just show you that um well, i'm just going to reset my user interface let me just go up into material and i'm going to choose the light here the light actually has its own material and you'll see here here's a blinds material and you see attached to the light is this mask here and that mask casts a nice nice um, blinds effect across her face so sometimes you get these unusual kind of shadows that you didn't expect that are cast by the light i'm just just a kind of a thought so uh, kind of meandering as usual guys but hopefully you got some ideas there the most important one i think is just to remember that if you get those those annoying seams which i've somehow deleted okay that's annoying um 
let's see if we can create them quickly now oh no uh, I, right i'm wondering where my renders have gone the renders i did of the face but i believe it's because poser now separates the renders off into firefly and superfly although these two were superfly so that doesn't make any sense but let me go back and change the render engine to superfly save okay let's um do a quick render of her face again oh actually we'll do a further one back a further back one so as you can see the um the seams on the body and we're just going to change this to skinning method traditional so it definitely creates that effect and now see the seams here see the seams here on the torso seams under the armpits so um yeah it's um i've got uh a post fx on with the intel denoiser so that i can render at a much lower lower resolution and then it'll up up quality it but if you can just about see there's seams here uh, they're not easy to see on the head but you can see them on the body so uh anyway guys i'll leave it there and hopefully you found something useful there thanks very much